Hello, everyone. I'm John Byrne with Parts of Quantum. Welcome to our fireside chat with Charles Fine. He is the Dean of the Asian Business School in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In fact, not merely the Dean, but the founding Dean. It was back in 2014 that uh, MIT, where he was a professor and still is, came to him and asked him to basically create a business school uh, in partnership with the Central Bank of Malaysia. Here we are all these years later, the first inaugural class entered in the fall of 2016. And we are now through, let's see, four classes uh, of entering MBAs. That's right, that's right. We're uh, expecting our fifth class to arrive in a couple of months. Tell me what makes the Asia School of Business different. So we, uh, we were quite innovative, I think, in the curriculum that we designed. We, we built on the MIT heritage of action learning and project-based learning, but we said we're going to start with the projects as core. So every semester, students work on a different project, and then we're going to build the curriculum and the coursework around the project work, rather than having the core of the program be classes where projects get hung on. So students spend roughly four, four to five weeks every semester on site in their projects in different countries and companies around Southeast Asia. And their coursework enhances and, uh, and enriches what the, the set of tools that they have to, to work on these projects. So we're quite applied in the sense that we, uh, we build around the projects and we build tools and theory around to help with the projects. But our core curriculum comes from MIT Sloan School. Uh, Roughly half of our classroom teaching is still by MIT Sloan professors, the other half by professors that we've uh, brought into Kuala Lumpur. So we have the MIT core curriculum, uh, we have the Asian uh, base of operations, and we have the, the projects as a, as a center point of our curriculum design. And experiential learning essentially makes up what, one third of the entire MBA program? That's right. Yeah, roughly four to five weeks out of every semester, a semester is like 14 weeks, is spent on site in the projects. So Charles, that almost sounds more like a med school rotation in a hospital where you're rotated from the ER to the surgery uh, and on, uh, because these are five projects in, on, in five different countries with five different companies. So I think the medical school model of clinical education is a great analogy. So, so in medical school, you spend the morning in the classroom and then the afternoon in the hospital or vice versa. And every day you, you see patients, you learn about the challenges of medical practice, and then you go back to the classroom and you learn more about the theory and how to, how to address these challenges. So we've taken that model directly, if you will, to management education where there's frequent cycling between time in the field and time in the classroom. And we think that enhances the learning process. Now, I know that in your inaugural class, you had 47 students from 26 different industries. I'm remembering my story, six continents and 12 countries. That's your right. uh, annual intake is 50 well, full-time students. It's an intimate program. Uh, right. Give me a sense of the diversity today. So I don't have it right in front of me, but uh, I think uh, our class, our, the class that we just uh, started this past fall was from 26 different countries. And this fall, we've got an additional nine countries that we've never had before. In total, we've had representation from about 36 countries around the world. Roughly 40% of our students come from Asia. Uh, and we get a significant chunk from North America, South America, Europe, Africa. So still very high diversity, and the faculty that we've hired at, uh, at ASB, we have 20 faculty from 15 different countries. So we're a very international campus. You walk onto the ASB campus, you say, gee, what, what culture am I in? And you're not a Malaysian culture, you're not an American culture, you're not an MIT culture, you're an ASB culture, which is a combination of all those. We're very proud of that, and, and our students get an incredible exposure to diversity and thinking, culture, business models, et cetera. Now give us a sense of the kind of projects that the students work on. So we've had some projects with uh, large companies. So Boeing has a factory 
uh, in, in Malaysia that we've done some projects at. We've had like Procter & Gamble, Motorola, so large uh, global multinationals. We've also had uh, low regional companies like Air Asia is the largest uh, uh, airline in the region. Uh, they've hosted some projects, some of the banks, regional banks like Maybank and CIMB. Uh, so we've had uh, regional players. Uh, and then we have uh, some very local players. We've had a number of projects at startups uh, that are working on uh, digital uh, uh, products or e-commerce products and things like that. Uh, there's local versions of, of, uh, of Amazon.com kinds of, of startups that we've worked on, uh, uh, transportation, et cetera. So it's a, it's a very broad range. Uh, and, and I'm assuming students are assigned to teams who work at these companies. Are they supervised by faculty as well? Yeah, so every project has a, is usually a team of four or five students. Each, each project has a faculty advisor and a business coach. So we've, we actually found a number of uh, MIT alumni from 20 or 30 years ago hmm. who are willing to be uh, business coaches uh, to our student projects. So every team gets a faculty advisor and a coach and has a, cl a client host who also oversees. And, uh, we, and at the end of every, every time they vi the students visit, we do a review session with the students and their coaches and faculty advisors to see what are you learning, what are your problems, how do we address them, how do we make it better. So we, how do you we, put that well, many projects into the curriculum? What do, you, what do you give up to get those five experiential learning opportunities? So we have fewer electives than say at mm -hmm. M MIT Sloan School has between 100 and 200 electives. Uh, our students have room for four to five to six electives in their curriculum. So our, our core program looks very similar to most major business schools. We have marketing, finance, accounting, economics, operations, entrepreneurship, et cetera. But our elective program is, is thinner. And we tell students, for example, if you wanna concentrate in marketing, then do a marketing project every semester. And we'll have a marketing professor as your advisor. If you wanna be in financial services, do a financial services project. So we can give more depth in the application, but we do give up depth in the, in the electives. Right. Now, since the very beginning, what kind of tweaks have you made in the program? So adding the business coaches was something we did after the first year. That what we found was that the faculty had a more conceptual perspective on how to advise the students. And there was a gap between sometimes the way the faculty would see the project and the client would see the project. And so adding the business coaches uh, helped a lot with that. Uh, we also, we learned that the first semester of the, pro the projects are always in Malaysia because students are adapting to the new uh, environment, a new culture. But then after the first semester, then we send them out uh, to different countries around the region. So uh, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, uh, Thailand, broad range, some in China, uh, et cetera. As far as, away as Korea, we've had projects. Uh, because they go several times a semester flying back and forth, it has to be within Asia, at least. And Charles, what kind of students do you look for? So we want people who are self-motivated, who are smart, who are ambitious, who can tolerate ambiguity and uncertainty. So our, our method of teaching people to swim is to throw them in the water and let them flail around. And, and that's what it's like, in the, particularly in the first semester in the first project. You're thrown into a project in a foreign culture with people from uh, cultures you've never met before, high diversity, uh, and you're supposed to, you're expected to deliver. And we haven't really taught you the tools yet. We're teaching you the tools as you need them. So uh, an ability to deal with that kind of uncertainty and ambiguity uh, is critical. Now that sounds pretty daunting because if you don't even have the fundamentals yet, and yet you're involved in a project with, in some cases, a high profile company. Um, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. Uh, it, it's scary. It's challenging. Uh, we try to pick relatively easy projects for the first term and the projects get more challenging as uh, the terms go on and the students yeah. get, uh, get more experience. Uh, but, uh, but we've had lots of situations that, that are high wire acts and uh, 
and we because we have the faculty advisors and the business coaches to to help out uh we manage i mean we we've, we've had some projects that didn't go as well as we'd hoped but we've had plenty that exceeded expectations and and the students after the fact always say wow we learned a lot and yeah. they and they don't say that just after the first semester but each additional semester and charles if i were to ask your students what were the three most memorable experiences they've had in your MBA program? I'm sure at top of the list would be these projects. Uh, what would be the other two? So one of them would be the trip to MIT. So every year we take all the students to MIT for a month of classes on the MIT campus. So uh, we have some MIT faculty who fly in and teach courses at ASB. And with the coronavirus now, we've got uh, obviously some digital fly-ins, uh, mm -hmm. but the trip to MIT, the time at MIT, that's critical. The other one, we instituted last year a China trek where we, we took all students to China for a week and we visited a range of companies on the cutting edge of, of AI and, uh, and technology. And mm -hmm. I think that was an eye-opener for a lot of the students as well. As, as much as they learn from the companies in Southeast Asia, going to China is another dimension and they got a huge amount out of that as well. And where do you fit the MIT portion of the program? Is it in the beginning, in the middle, at the end? So it's all throughout. So uh, oh. we, the MIT faculty teach some of our core courses uh, when they fly in uh, and also when we take the students there, but they also teach some electives. So bo both in the first year of the program and in the second year program, uh, students get some MIT faculty interspersed with the projects and interspersed with the ASB faculty. And what kind of outcomes have the students have who've actually graduated from the program? So we've, we've done reasonably well in placement. So we, we do a calculation of purchase price parity uh, salaries. So, so obviously the, the purchasing power is different in Southeast Asia and other parts of the world. And some of our students stay here. A lot of our students come because they want to be in Asia. But I think our average salaries with purchase power parity Last year was 133,000 US dollars in parity. So, so that's comparable with, with the good schools. We're, we're proud of that. And we've had some students who've gone to places like Amazon, Facebook, McKinsey, so the big names that, uh, that attract the American MBAs. Uh, but we have plenty that, again, go to these regional uh, companies like, like an AirAsia or Maybank and, and some that go to the smaller companies. And uh, the tech industry has been has been attractive to our students. So Microsoft and Google have actually picked up some of our students as well in the region, not, not back in the US. Right. And so the program would really be ideal for someone who is a global minded individual who may ultimately want to work in Southeast Asia or not. So in Asia, so, so I would say uh, the students we get from Asia are interested in an Asian career, building Asian networks and staying from Asia. The students we get from outside of Asia, most of them are interested in dipping their toe into the Asian economy. That is, what would it be like to have a career in Asia? Asia obviously has become the economic growth engine for the world. Uh, the, the opportunities are, are great here. The rates of promotion are faster. And so some of our students end up going back to, to Europe or US or Africa but many have, have decided to stay uh, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, uh, a variety of countries in the, in the region. Now the program is in English, but I imagine that if you go and get a job in Asia, you have to speak a different language, right? So it varies a lot. So, so Malaysia was a British colony for many years, and so English is, is common here. Obviously Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, English is spoken. In, uh, in China, it varies. So in Shenzhen, southern part of China, English is spoken commonly. But if you're going to end up in Beijing, you need Chinese. One, we had one American student who went to Vietnam, and he learned to speak Vietnamese. Uh, <laughs> not, I don't think he speaks it as well as the, lo the locals, but, but he, uh, he decided he was going to devote himself to learning the language. He works in, a, uh, in manufacturing in Vietnam, and, uh, and he's managed to figure it out. Uh, so, so we've had a range, uh, but so language can be an issue, uh, but Eng English is still the lingua franca, if you will, of the business world. Exactly. Now, Charles, do you teach in the program? 
So I do. So I, my field is operations, uh, operations management and supply chain. So I usually teach one course to each, each uh, class. Uh, one, we had one time the first year where one of our MIT faculty broke his collarbone three days before he was supposed to fly to Kuala Lumpur. So I, I did a, a rapid substitution uh, that week as well. But uh, usually I, it's one operations class and then I, I help out in a few other classes. But uh, I, I'm more tasked to administration now, which has its blessings and curses, I guess. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, what's the difference between teaching an MIT class in MI, at MIT in Boston and a class at the Asian School of Business. What's the difference for you? So the way we've structured our curriculum is that we, each of our courses usually runs for an intense week or two rather than spread out over the semester. That way we can fit in the action learning project. So you spend two weeks in class and you spend two weeks in the field. So it's not like you're going to each class uh, twice a week for a whole semester every week. Uh, so, so the teaching, uh, comes more fast and furious, if you will. You're teaching every day for a week or every day for a couple of weeks, maybe for half a day. Uh, and um, so you have to adjust the pace. There's part of it. Um, I think also our students get to know each other better. In a class of 50, they're in class with the same people every day, all day. Uh, they do their projects together. They live in our residential uh, facility together. And so they're, they're a tighter group. They know each other uh, much, much better. And that, that actually leads to, uh, I think, sometimes a richer dialogue in the classroom. So they're fun to teach. And in fact, the Sloan faculty who have come to teach our students have said they can, they can feel the cohesion is different. And they say our students are fun to teach. We, we, we have, they have a good vibe. Now, Charles, three years ago when I first met you and we talked about the school, I remember that um, the students were actually able to stay in a hotel that was essentially run by the central bank. Is that still the case? No, so, so now we have our own residential facility. So uh, uh, the central bank has invested a significant amount of money to build us an entire campus, both an academic building and a residential facility. Residential facility has 350 beds in total. Right now we have only 100 plus students so it's not full, but each is, uh, we have full apartments, we have apartments for families, uh, so we have our own residential facility now. Wow, um, that's pretty impressive. So we've been very well endowed. We have both an endowment, which actually puts us in the top 20 business schools in the world in terms of endowment per student, uh, and we have, in addition, uh, a state-of-the-art world-class uh, facility academic and residential. So the, the central bank here has made a major, major investment to uh, support MIT bringing world-class management education to this region. And I remember that was the original goal to create a world-class business school in Malaysia. Um, are you there? <laughs> I'd say we're on the journey. So uh, uh, <laughs> we're, we're currently applying for AACSB accreditation. Uh -huh. uh, uh, you, you can't apply until you've graduated two classes. So we finished our two classes. We finished our three classes now. So we started the process last year. It's a multi-year process. Once we get accreditation, then we're, we can be ranked by some of the major ranking groups. And then we'll see how we stack up. Uh, we feel pretty good about the quality of our students, the quality of the jobs they get, the quality of our faculty. Uh, so uh, we'll, but we'll see what the rating agencies and the folks like you have to say uh, <laughs> once, we're, once we're in the running. And the latest wrinkle is you've started a part-time program for MBAs. That's right, yeah. So we call it the MBA for Working Professionals so people can keep their full-time jobs. Uh, we have them come to campus roughly for a, a nine-day period, like a weekend plus, two weekends plus a week, every six to seven weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they... Uh, but they go on the full MIT trip for, the, for a month. They can either do two weeks in one year and two weeks the next year, or they can do four weeks at one time. So they get the, they get the same MIT faculty because we always schedule them to come when the MIT faculty come. They get the same trip to MIT, but the, the rest of their course, some of their courses are digitally delivered uh, as opposed to in-person for our full-time mm -hmm. program. They also do action learning projects as well. 
some with their companies and some with outside companies. And are you doing executive education there? A small amount. So uh, uh, we started out uh, devoting ourselves to the MBA uh, program, building the flagship program. We did some executive education on demand or on request when some of our corporate partners who we do action learning with wanted programs. But now we're, we're, we're building it up. We're up to 20 uh, full-time faculty on campus now. And so we have uh, enough capacity that we can do some exec ed. And there's, and there's demand and interest in the area. So I would say it's a small but growing uh, domain for us. Right. So Charles, what's your advice to someone who'd be interested in coming to be a full-time MBA in the program? They should come and visit, right? <laughs> they should, well, travel is restricted right now, unfortunately. They can visit us digitally, uh, but uh, they should talk to our students. They should talk to our alumni, talk to our admissions team. Uh, we'll give you a video visual visit and hopefully we'll be able to host you uh, by the fall. But uh, actually this year, uh, we had a record number of applications and a record number of new admits. So we may end up, coronavirus permitting, we may end up above our, fit, our target of 50 this year. Uh, and, and now that we're moved in, moving into the new building, we'll grow. We'll, we'll probably uh, move to two sections over the next two years uh, and, and grow the program. But my advice is uh, take a, uh, come and check us out. Exactly. Well, Charles, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's great to talk to you again, and thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Someday I'd like to come and visit and stay in that residence. We're going to have, well, we'll invite you to our graduation next year. All right. <laughs> Charles, always a pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. Great evening. Bye-bye. Thank you.